Hi and welcome to part 8 of the AX7 setup. Uh, so this part covers basically the whole stock breakdown, so the stock dimensions. So we're going to set up the site, the warehouses and the location as well as the storage dimension groups and then the item model group and the item groups in the end. We are not yet doing um, the whole posting profiles of the items, but um, basically this section is just the preparation that we can do it later on, um, basically to set up also the posting rules, so the financial posting rules for those things. Good, so um, let's start, I would say. So I'm again in the mandate zero, 10, so in my company in the end, and let's go then basically to inventory management, to setup, to inventory breakdowns, inventory breakdown. And in here you have exactly those three things that we are going to set up. So the sites, the warehouses and the inventory locations. So let's start with the sites. Um, we're just going to create a new one and let's call it GER for Germany. Normally one site, one site per mandate is normally already fine, actually. So this means you can add an address which is not necessary. So we'll just quickly save it in here. Means nothing else than we have already our site created and we can actually already move on with the warehouses. So I'm just going to create two different kind of warehouses. So the first one would be the main warehouse so just the whole thing for the site, Germany, of course, um, that's fine, that's fine. We are not going to do it over a quarantine warehouse. For the master planning itself, we leave it for the moment as well um, away. And those things we, will, we are going to add um, <clears throat> on a later point of time. Good. So um, I create a second warehouse. Let's call it... Um, SP1, for example, salesperson one. So let's just assume that um, a salesperson does have his own stock as well. So um, therefore, we are just going to create here a new warehouse just for this salesperson. Well, um, if he has also some kind of uh, private stock or is just going to take some stock for himself, and therefore we just create here a new warehouse. Good. Um, I save this as well and you also directly see down here that the hierarchy is going to um, be updated automatically and the next step will be then that we are going to create the inventory locations and let's say for mayor, mayor, warehouse main we have we do need to have a nail then so just quickly have to delete once again so i also need to create an inventory ale um I create new warehouse main ale main good or just std standard standard okay good i save it and now i can go to the inventory locations and now i should be able with con uh, with alt and n to say in here I want to create a location for main warehouse with the standard ale and destination location can be blank I guess or not field location uh, main uh, no, no. Why can't I add in here the location? Is it on the ale? Maybe. So let's quickly go back to the ale and in here to edit not to the warehouses to Okay, 
that's kind of strange inventory warehouses inventory location let's go back here and just quickly create a new one uh, not two just one and the warehouse should be again main ale standard manual update manual update was it okay and now I can say here location as well it's also called main and then it should be possible to save it okay good I create a second location let's say main ale also again standard one manual update yes let's call it shelf one or whatever so basically just um basically just the things just yeah, based on basically based on how your location structure is done uh you can actually just um set it up this way good um so they have created two two locations for the main warehouse i also create the standard ale for the warehouse sp1 ale std standard let's see if this is possible yes okay so and then again to inventory location and this one just have actually just one location so warehouse is in this case sp1 and the ale itself also this one manual update yes and i call this as well sp1 good so this means now i should be able to save it which is actually fine good let's go back quickly to the warehouses and in here we are just going to add some default lo default received location so by default uh, the issue and as well basically everywhere are just going to add main of course in a project it can be different of course but I just make it the easy way and I also have I also have to say it is not my um, the whole the whole inventory breakdown uh, is not actually not the not my major so not my not not my topic that I'm normally doing I'm normally doing just finance so therefore these setups are normally already prepared by some by another guy who is doing the whole TNT stuff good perfect but in the end, we have now um, created our um, inventory breakdowns with the warehouses, with the locations, and with the site. So um, this means we were here, it is already done, and we move on with the storage dimension group, item model group, and setup of the item groups. Those three are actually really important also for finance so those three things normally always needs to be discussed with um, basically with more more or less more or less everyone is affected by those three settings and uh, therefore those are quite important also to understand what is meant with those so uh, let's go um, to setup and then to inventory no we start with the uh, dimension groups the dimension groups is in product information management in setup and in here dimensions and variant groups i'm not going to work with variants so i'm not going to work with sizes colors styles and whatever i'm also at the moment not going to work with serial numbers so also no tracking dimension groups uh, we need to add we just add there the non one um, but the storage dimension groups is something we need to have a look at um, well, I'm working with the standard mandate and this is a shared table. So from all the other mandates, those are already um, available. But of course, we are going to create a new one. So I just click on new and I call it site warehouse lock. So site warehouse location, basically for physical items. Good. So I can quickly save it and now there are some quite important flags in the end so first of all since we are going to work with site warehouses and location i'm activating here as well the location of course and the physical inventory flag is basically nothing else than we are going to say 
if we want to track the physical inventory also on warehouse or and location level so this means if this flag would not be ticked then it can then you can actually go into a negative uh, physical stock on location level the same thing would be for the warehouse so normally it definitely makes sense to set this flag or to tick this flag good the next is more or less the most important thing in here from at least from a financial perspective um, the financial inventory so this means in the end nothing else you need to decide on which level do you want to uh, track the the um, stock value in the end so in the end you just need to say well i have a inventory value report uh, on which level do i want to see the financial inventory is it just by side so if it is enough if yeah, there is one item it has on every warehouse exactly the same price then um, it is enough just to um, put here the financial inventory if you want to be able to say well okay there are different warehouses where the financial or where the, where the cost amount of an item is different um, then you need to tick this flag here as well um, on location level normally i wouldn't i would never recommend to put here the financial inventory on location level as well because what is going to happen if you if you tick here this uh, flag then every transfer between two warehouses will create uh, financial postings as well because um, he's going ax is telling well okay it can be that the cost price is different from one warehouse to another and then he basically just um, shifts to shifts also the cost price from one warehouse to another so the more ticks you have in here the more um, postings onto your stock account you will have in the end from my point of view as i said on location level i would not set it because honestly no one needs to have the uh, the financial inventory on location level um, normally on warehouse level is uh, totally totally um, sufficient because then you can just for example create a warehouse which is which is called kind of quarantine warehouse where the cost prices are different or return material warehouses where also the cost price of these items are different and so on good so i leave it now with um, this setup uh, how we have it in here and this is already fine important is this is a storage dimension group just for physical items on a later section we are also going to create the storage dimension group for non-physical items because they will never have the same uh, setup as physical items of course good so storage dimension groups are created which means nothing else then we can go back to inventory management again to set up and we were on the inventory and we go to the item model groups again and a very important setup for finance because in here you are going to define the inventory model good so i just quickly create a new one and i call it uh, fifo fifo so first in first out for basically also physical items it will also be the case there will be there will be a different kind of a different kind of item model group for um, for non-physical. I call it I FIFO for physical items. So I for items, and it is FIFO and it is for physical items. Good, perfect. So the inventory model you have different kind of um, things. Uh, from my point of view, I like FIFO. I really like FIFO. Uh, I I'm not a fan of standard costs, but it's just yeah. There, every, there's everyone. Everyone is a little bit, little bit different. So um, I actually like FIFO. Therefore, I use here also the inventory model FIFO. Good. So um, means nothing else than um, in the cost price. In the cost price, you would have the possibility to include the physical value. Means nothing else than AX would pull through also the cost prices for example from product receipt so just the estimated cost price at the time of the product receipt and would pull it through the whole value flow in the end so if you would have let's say um, a purchase which is just received and you already sold this purchase uh, then 
AX would also include this pr the physical price into this actually. I actually like this flag. There are some um, some some disadvantages regarding the revaluation and the stock closing because there is AX is then posting also um, stock revaluation postings with um, a type physical value which are in some cases and in some reports not that nice not that nice done actually good um fixed price receive the uh, fixed receipt price would be in the end nothing else than if you would if the if an item is always with the same price um on two stocks so it is actually kind of standard costing but a little bit little bit different so um I would say it is quite old-fashioned the fixed the fixed receipt price because if the standard costing would be that better in such a case. Good ledger integration integration. Um, of course, we are going to post the physical and also the financial inventory, and we want to accrue also the liability on the product received. But we are not going to defer the revenue. Okay, good. Um, negative inventory, physical negative inventory makes, in my opinion, is for physical items never sense because this would mean that you can just sell products which you don't have. Financial negative inventory makes sense to tick it. What does it mean? It means nothing else. If I would leave it blank, it would not be possible to sell a product um, where you just have the product received posted but not yet the purchase invoice in the end so this is the effect if i leave it blank if i tick it then this means it is possible to sell a product where you just posted the product receipt but not yet the purchase invoice good okay so this these were actually the important things from a finance perspective so this means um i say here as well vendor list i don't want to check if it is an approved vendor which means i can save it i just say you know check otherwise i would just always end up with some messages that the vendor is not um is not um, approved good so um we already create the item model group which means next will be the item groups um as it is in AX always, all the groups are in the end the trigger of the whole posting logic. So this means nothing else than um, the item group will be also the thing which um, defines how to post onto which stock accounts and so on. Good. So let's go to the to the item groups and mm, yeah, let's <laughs> let's quickly create here for let's create here how should i i i raw so um raw material the i is also for physical items so basically for an item i minus good I'm not yet going to. I'm not going to add here the posting rule. So if I save it, then I would be able here to say um, whatever. Um, but I'm not going to do it at the moment. I'm just going to create these groups. Good. Uh, I say I S F M um, semi finished goods. Okay, I save it as well, and then we can create two different kind of finished goods based on some different kind of product lines. Uh, let's, yeah, let's. We have at the moment my compliment. Let's do it just quickly this way, just that you can imagine something out of it. I'm just going quickly to rename the company, so I just go to legal entity, and I just. Let's just have that we just have a kind of a case. So I just say edit, and the name of my company is not anymore my company, but it is a Swiss um, coffee capsule produce produce producer. I hope no one knows who it is, but um, now let's let's call it Nescresso. <laughs> Nest. Nescresso. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's call let's call it this one Nescresso Germany. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, I also quickly adjust it here on the address. So, and then I click on OK, and 
this one would then be not my second company, but this Cresso uh, France. And here as well in the address, this Cresso uh, France. <laughs> I'm 100% sure no one gets which should be this company because, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the item model, item groups, item group, um, inventory management, setup, inventory, and item groups. Mm, I switched the company. I want to go to 010. Good. I create a new one. I say I, F, G, um so finished goods and then ma for finished goods coffee machines and i create another one i fg cc cca C cap C C A. Um, so finished goods. Um, coffee, coffee capsules. For example. Good. So perfect. So we've created um, the item groups now as well. So I would say I'm also going to create the first first item in the end that we just have also had a look at where we need to add what. So uh, this means nothing else than um, in the product information management, you can go to products and in here you have the products and the released products. Now. In AX, it is the case that the products itself is the shared table. So basically, you can have one item which is released in several companies, so several mandates, and the released products are actually the real products just from this mandate, um, which are released in this mandate. Uh, always, if you create a released product, it will be it will go automatically into the products table as well. Good. So I, we just go to create um, a released item. And I just create a new one. And important in the beginning is in here. Here is in here the product type. Item means nothing else than it is a stocked product. Service means nothing else than it is a non-stocked product. Um, we just created actually the, the things for the for the uh, for <laughs> for the stocked items, and therefore I always I have to choose at the moment uh, to, to type item. I choose here a product number, let's call it um, 100,000 or 100,000, yeah, right, okay. Name is brown coffee, brown coffee or coffee lungo, whatever. Good. Um, that's fine. And you already see here that we have here the item model groups so or all the things that we've already created. So I FIFO, of course, we don't have anything else that we can add. Item group, we need to say, well, okay, it is coffee capsule lungo. So it is a finished goods and it is then CCA. Storage dimension group is the one that we've created, so it is S set aside warehouse and location, and the tracking dimension group we didn't created it, but uh, it is actually none. I'm just quickly going to show you later on what uh, what what kind of of other things are in here. Basically, you see it right here. So none means nothing else than it is not batch number tracked, and it is also not serial number tracked. Good. Inventory units, let's say we use pieces. There are quite a lot of them already available. Of course, you can create your own ones, but I say, of course, everywhere it is pieces. And the sales taxation, we created them in an earlier session. Of course, it is not a service. It is normally also not reduced. Well, it can be actually, it could be that it is reduced based on the country, but we just say, well, the coffee capsules uh, is 
has the normal full rate, which means nothing else. Let me just add here full. Good. I click on OK. And we've already created our first item. Of course, it is not yet possible to post onto this item because there is no posting rule available. And therefore, yeah. But this will be something that we, which we will have a look at in the next section. Good. So let's quickly go through and purchase is basically fine. Manage inventory. We can go to default order settings. It just makes it easier later on. So I just say normally this is bought for the site Germany. It's fine. This is also fine. No multiple and good. I save it. I quickly go back. Let's have a look. At the site specific order settings means nothing else than on the site Germany normally we are buying it directly on the main warehouse save it we go back and we also say since it is a warehouse item we say in here we want to have a new one where we say on the warehouse main we are going to use the location main, the side main, and here as well. Picking location, we can leave it blank and we can save it. Good. Uh, it just makes it easier on a later point of time when you have it uh, this way. For the moment, this is fine. Of course, we can, you can also say, so in the end, it should is, is more the case that you say, well, the received location is somewhere at the received location and they then scan the whole things and put it to the correct location or to the correct warehouse and so on. So, but for the moment, this is, this setup is fine this way. Good. Um, this was it with this session. So we created our first item. We also have the, the dimension breakdowns done and we've also created the storage dimension group and the item model groups for stocked items means nothing else what is missing um, the whole posting logic so this will be something which we will have a look in the next section how you can create your uh, posting rules for the items so for a purchase order and for a sales orders and so on good perfect i Hope you enjoyed this session and looking forward to uh, looking forward to see you in part, I guess, nine. Yeah, part nine. Perfect. <laughs> Bye.